Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and I just want to say thank you for coming back. I really do very much appreciate it and, and I hope you guys enjoy some of the videos from last month of 31 days until Halloween. Um, if you guys did, please let me know by liking, subscribing, etc. And since this month is November, I'm going to be reading some inspiring stories and I hope you guys would enjoy it and yeah and this story is called Untold and it's by I'm hoping I pronounced the these names right but it's called he it's by Gur G-E-I-R that's the first name and the Last name is Westroll, Westroll, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, but let's just get right into it. Where are we? said the old man. In, in a dark woods. Who are you? said the old man. Just a brother, said the young man. Stop, said the old man said let me look at you it's dark and i'm blind for me it is always dark i can always see with my hands if you allow me yes the old man felt his f f felt first the young man's wavy hair please describe your color of your hair have you ever seen colors? I have never s had sight. Then, how can you describe colors? I know the cold of my skin and black is moonless night, said the man blind old man said. I know the co cool damp of brown earth. I know the warmth of the golden bright sh sunshine. I know the searing heat of red fire. Which of these is it? My hair is a bright golden bright sh sunshine. The old man ran his fingers over the young man's face. You look like a god. The god Opal? God of archers, music and dancing. My twin brother was compared to an, a statue of a god, Apollo, Apollo. The young man said, the twin's brother's hair was the color of a golden sunlight like mine but he dyed it to a color of cold black night. A woman screamed. The young man pulled the, pulled the arm of the old man's together and they made it through the dark woods in the direction of a, the scream to a small log cabin at the shore of a black lake. The door of the cabin was open warm yellow light streaming out. Two young women were in the doorway, a blonde standing just inside of the cabin, a dark haired, uh, haired one with two feet outside, leaning towards straining but being held by a blonde woman grip around her wrists. Another than, than uh, the other color, the two looked so similar that the young man looked like th they must be sisters. What's the use? The dark haired sister said. I can take this anymore. I cannot take this anymore. With that, she managed to break free from her sister's grip and ran directly towards the black lake behind the cabin. When she got 
to the shore of the lake. Without hesitation, she threw herself forward into the water and the lake shallow, sallow her up with even a rip marrying with still black surface. The remaining of the sister's shoulders slumped. I knew it, she said, speaking to the young man and the old man, young and old man. Apparently unsurprised at seeing strangers, she knew what, I knew what she would do it. I knew I couldn't help her. I'm sorry, the old, the old blind man. I have no sight. What did she do? She went into the lake and forgotten the blonde woman, she said. She couldn't resist its pulling anymore. I don't know how much longer I can. She was, she was, she, was she your sister? The young man asked, although he felt already knew the answer. Yes, she was my sister. Then I'm so sorry for your loss, the man said. The young man said, and I wish I had come sooner, said the old man. What could have I, what could have you done? The remaining sister said, then turned her back on them and went inside the little log, log cabin, leaving the door open with the warm yellow light streaming out of the cold dark. As they entered and closed the door behind, the old man said, Describe it to me. It's a very large room, the young man said. Much, much larger than sh should fit inside a small cabin we entered. It was a size of a great hall of castle. People, are, there are people, so many people, hundreds of people sitting in chairs, up holders and leather the couch of the red hot fire and the color of the brown earth, and colored of the black moonless night. They are seated around a small table in the group with, uh, with groups of four and threes and twos, and some by themselves. Some are dining, others are playing board games or cards or dice. There are windows, but I see dozens of closed doors all around the great hall and the walls are lined with shelves full of leather bond books. There are large empty stones floor with fire pits in the center of the hall and next to the empty chair unhustled a yellow leathered the color of warm gold sunlight. Thank you, said the old man. That was very clear description. I can see all of the, all in, in my mind's eyes. Bring me one of the leather bond books. Which one? Anyone will do. I will just stand right in front of you and wait for you. Right here and wait for you. The young man went to the nearest bookshelf, which was fill, still fit. 50 paces from where they entered, picked a book at random and opened it. The pages were all black. He opened another and another at the same time every page. This is strange, he thought, but so is everything else at, at, about this place. Uh, and I supposed to suppose it doesn't matter to be a blind man so he brought one of the blank books back to the blind man thank you the old man accept the book now lead me to a chair by the fire pit the, when the old man sat down in the yellow chair the people who had all been silent been silent to, until this moment began to moan and grumble and cry out. Don't sit there, one sh shouted. The other man smiled. Nobody sits here, yelled another, 
another man. Well, I am, said the old man sit, sitting here. One man was by himself at the table, nearest the fire pit and yellow chair. He now arcos and approaches the man, old man. No one has ever sit, sat here before, the man said, and I don't know why this is so. I, I only know that the chair is not for us to, who have no stories of their own. Describe this to me, to me, describe this man to me, said the old man. He's tall and thin with fine feathers, features, sorry. The young man said, his hair is the color of red fire. His eyes are the blue green color of cool water as you let your hand trial outside of the the boat on the warm su summer day. He dressed in a livery of a servant. What is your name? Hendrich said the red said red hi red haired man dressed like livery livery. They call me Iron I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I'm sorry. Hendrich. You said you cannot sit in this chair because you have no story of your own. No one of us here have stories of our own, said Iron, Iron Hendrich. We only have parts of the story. Then tell me your part. And so the Iron Hiron strolled his story of a prince who was turned into a frog and how princesses kissed the frog and he became him prince again. My part of the story, Iron Wrench, feels like, like a thought after thought. I was the servant of the prince and I, and I was known for a faithful Henrich. When the prince was changed into a frog, I had my heart pound, bound in a three iron bands to keep it from bursting out with for grief, for the iron strength than grief. Then on the day of the prince's wedding to get the princess, there was three iron bands broke away and fell off. One by one, making a load of crack of each broke away from my heart. For love is stronger than iron. And so I remained to iron Hensrich. That is it. Little part of the story. I appeared from the end of the... I appear at the very end. There was a little connection to the story of the frog prince most... Mostly my part of have forgotten in the tale was told. The young man said, at least you have a part of a story. Yes, I do, said, said Iron Ren Rich. But then what? Is that all there is for me? A part of someone else's story? You want to know your, uh, your own story, the old man started stated yes said iron rich hendrich is that much to ask all you need is to do is ask and that's just so happens the man old man said he was open a leather bound book to one of the blank pages that that i have your story right here then the old man began telling Iron Rich stories, and he didn't. And as he did, the young man saw words appear on the pages, along with fine il illustration and the brighter colors. In the story, Iron Rich Man was walking through, excuse me, through the me meadow, and there, he, there he was found a suit armor bonds to rock with. Heavy iron chains, the iron 
armor armor was that the future king who was the rule that country with which had chained the armor to the rock and entry and I don't know how to pronounce that word, but sorry. It was so no one had been able to even come near it. So the country had no king and the witches and fairies and imps ran free and tipped cows and turned milk sour and transferred the people into the toads and did all sorts of mischief since there was no king. I lost my spot. To set things straight. But Iron Hench, who, who, whose heart was pure and good, wa good, walked right up to the suit of the armor man and put his hand in the iron heart and entered the, of the breast, breastplate and then the iron chain broke and the magical suit of armor was freed from the spell then he put on the suit of armor and then and then iron hens rich blue green eyes were wide what happened to me the old man closed the book that is for you to find out he patted the book that's all in here. Your story is told. You, but you must live it. And it, it was, you lived it. You cannot know what will happen next. You will only know what, what it was all about when you look back. But I promise you, it's a good story full of Herrick Deeds laughter, great food, and drinks. Some romance and some friendships too. Even though there are dark times and troubles and sour, sor so, 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 but it, in the end you will. Well, I am not permitted to tell you what happened to the end. Do you see a door? with an iron heart on it in this room. Iron Wrench looked around. Yes, he said, I see it. The young man saw it too. One of the doors had a iron heart in the middle of it. The heart hadn't been there before, but now it was. When do you, when do you go out that door? The old man said. You will figure, find yourself in a meadow with a magical suit and armor and chains of rocks. Then you, your story, story begins. Iron Hitch, Hensrich thanked the old man and walked straight over the door with an iron heart, with an iron, when Iron Hensrich opened the door outside, he, he was a green meadow with a bright blue cloud sky. He walked through the door and shut it behind him. The iron heart on the door glowed red for a moment, then vanished. Next up was a young blonde woman whose sitter, sister had gone to, into the lake after forgotten. My name is Javit, she said. My poor sister had the same part of it in the story. You couldn't really separate us from each other. So, in a way, I didn't even have it my own part of the story. I know how that feels, said the young man. But it gets worse, she said. Our shared part was a bad one. We were, the, we were mean, ignorant stepsisters. You mean like in Cinderella, said the young man, since those were the stepsisters that came first to mind. Not like Cinderella, precisely the story of Cinderella. 
That was her story. Our step, our stepsister Ella, we looked, we called Cinderella. Because we sat in the cider of the fireplace to keep warm. See, you immediately thought of us, didn't you? Didn't you, my sister and I, when I said, mean, arrogant stepsisters? That's why all we, we are, mean and ignorant. That's why my sister went to, off to the lake of the forgotten. How would you like it if all of you known for being mean and ignorant? At least you, you're you known for something, young man, said young man. The old man opened the book, flipped past the pages with Iron Man, Iron Rich, Hens Rich story until he became, came to a blank page. The young man saw words and um, illustrating for me on the page. Then suddenly the old man closed the book. Some songs, he said, and in the mirror key. You mean, she said, the tragedy? The, a brave tale of significance. You would be reminded of a as an iron. Herny. Herno? But yes, the story, if you could choose to accept, accept it, is a tragedy. Who, Will I love will I love and be loved? The old man opened the book again. A single tear for, uh, formed in one of his milky white eyes, ran down his cheek, and fell into the page. Yes, he said. You will love and be loved. Then, she said, I want that story. She uh, straight tended straight tended her shoulder that had been slumped since her f sister drove into the lake of, of the forgotten and looking around the stars around she saw that the large teardrop from, had form of one of the doors she thanked the old man and took her and took her leave through the doors after she had exited and shut the door behind her, the teardrop glow blew for a moment, then disappeared. And so it went on and on, as one by one people left their chairs and stood before the old man, blind man, to each receive their own story. The young man noticed that the same went by people. The old man was asking him, for his thoughts and ideas, and the old man would only use the young man's ideas and weaving the stories until for, toward the end of it. The young man's telling the stories and with just a prompt of old man, eventually the old blind man sat back in the yellow chair and just smiled and nodded as a young man story told the young man's stories. After the last of them, he felt he left out the door to live their own story. The old man said, now young man, it is time for you to tell your story. What do you mean, said the young man? I don't have a story. I'm, I'm just a brother. So you say, but you have a name. I have a name, but I have no life. Let's uh, start with your name. The young man was quiet for a lo long time. Then he sighed in th from a deep within his chest and spoke. My name is Jess. Gardner Peasley. I was born dead. After I was born dead, my twin brother Elvis Aaron Presley was born alive. And I grew up to be a famous man, great singer all throughout his life. Elvis grieved for me, but 
that there that's all there is to me the lost my twin brother who never lived until i found myself in the dark woods holding your arm i never was let me tell you my story the old man said my name is Demordoris. I was fa I, a famous teller, maybe the most famous temple, tell, storyteller you ever lived, was named Homer. He told a story about a hero named Odysseus. That in that story, the Odysseus. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm going to spell it for you guys. O-D-Y-S-S-E-Y. So, I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's how you... I don't know. I have a story, small part, small part, where I tell stories to... Odysseus? Stories, and then that's so powerful to make it... A great hero break down in tears and through the catharsis of his tongue and free to tell his own story. Homer made a blind made me blind because Homer himself was blind. In a sense, Homer made me imagine of himself as he as if he himself was inside the story he told. But that's all I am, a storyteller. I can tell stories for others, but I can't have no story of for myself. Jess, the young blonde man, said, Demaris, now that's what you've told the stories. I will tell your story. You, Demor Demoris. Walk through the wor worlds to find people who feel that their stories were not untold. No matter who they were, no matter what they have done for, no matter their age, you help them to help them to inspire them to live their own lives and stories. Thank you, he said, the old blind man teller. Yes, I accept. That that's my story. The old man stood up and took the young man's hand, then guided him into the yellow chair. When Jess was seated, the young in the in the yellow chair by the fire pit, the old man bowed to the young man and looked straight in his eyes with a milky white eye. Now. Let me tell you your your story, the old man, blind man said. His voice made an echo in a great empty hall. Just, just as I, Demaris, helped a real people in, in real worlds live their stories, you, Jess Presley, who near lived, and is a teller untold stories for who can... Who come to this hall? The story people who never exited out of fairy tales, myths, poems, fiction, and fiction of all kinds, and who only have parts in their own people's stories. Do you expect accept this as your own story? Yes, I do, said Jess. I'm so... I, I'm grateful, but I'm surprised that I thought my part in the story would be to serve as your guide. I re resigned to simply being part of a, your story. That would be so much better than someone who never even had a story. But now you have set me to free to live my own story for as long as there are stories to told and p stories people story people who have small parts which is to say forever thank you but tell me this how can you blind as you are 
make it through the words without someone's got to guide you. I I'm guided, he said, but the beacons of hope shining like candles across the world across the worlds I see hope in the darkness. I walk through the darkness towards hope. All I need from those stories that were are not told, untold is their faintest glow of hope. Let me know what your guys' thoughts on that story. If you guys enjoyed this story, please let me know by liking, subscribing, etc. I sure enjoy this story and I will see you in the next video. Bye.